Hey there. So you're thinking about building your first dark themed dashboard in Excel. Uh, I remember building my first dark themed dashboard. It was exciting and cool. And uh, maybe you're like me, you see all the tutorials out there and those tutorials are really neat and they show really cool charts and they're really visually interesting. But they often, when you look a little deeper, haven't put much thought into the data. They're not really labeled properly. They don't really make sense. The data is confusing or misleading or hard to interpret. And I want to talk a little bit about striking a balance between visual appeal which is one of the great things about dark themes, they look great, and actionable insights. That's kind of my specialty area in dashboards. Over the years, I built dashboards for a lot of big brands, Microsoft, Philips, Google, and I learned a lot of lessons from those projects. Those were big, custom kind of projects, but a lot of those lessons I learned can be applied to something as simple as Excel. Um, so I wanna just give you some of those insights so that you can avoid some of the pitfalls of doing a dark theme dashboard and following some of those tutorials you see online uh, and make something that maybe is a little bit more actionable and even is better than all of the stuff that you've been seeing online because you absolutely can do it and it's not as hard as you might think. So this is standard Excel, no plugins, no fancy coding. The background is built using the shape feature under insert. There's a shape option in Excel. Um, those shapes uh, are, there's a ton of them, but you can then style them and make them look however you want. And this kind of goes into this idea that you can treat Excel a little like PowerPoint. If you use the insert shapes feature, the insert images feature, you can start to stack things together. Uh, Excel actually uses layers in the same way that PowerPoint does. You know, in PowerPoint, you layer your shapes on top of each other to kind of create effects. Well, the same thing is going on in Excel. Each of these layers represents a different part of our dashboard. And when you stack them together, you can basically make any design that you can make in PowerPoint just as easily. So I created that, that background, and then I just layered pivot charts on top of it. These are all pivot charts. And that, because they're pivot charts, makes this a dynamic dashboard. So we can filter by region on the left here. We have the ability to drill down into different regions and get deeper insights. So functionally speaking, this is a useful dashboard because we can drill down, we can get overall insights, we can get region-specific insights, all that. But the substance is really what we put on the page. And this is what I call information design, starting to think about the hierarchy of your data and taking time to understand your data before you start building your dashboard. So what I always tell people is think about like a narrative pyramid. What I mean by that is in the shortest two words, three words way possible, describe what you're trying to, what insight you're trying to give with your dashboard, then go a little bit bigger, maybe use a full sentence to describe it, then a little bigger, maybe two sentences and work your way down so that you really understand what you're trying to communicate. This is, I'm trying to see sales and profit. Okay simple version, but I really want to see sales and profit and how we're performing over time. And then I want to see sales and profit, but I also want to see it broken down into important categories so that I can understand how we're doing across different regions and categories. Okay, great. Now I have a sense. The most important thing is sales and profit. And because you know that you can emphasize it and take time to highlight it. This is such a great advantage of dark themes. You can use color, you can use charts to draw your attention into a specific area much more effectively than you might be able to in a light theme. Color really stands out here. Dark themes in general are a little bit better for focusing on data visualizations. When we do UX research, we see that people's eyes are drawn to charts more quickly in dark themes, and they tend to start analyzing those charts before they start thinking about the text and the metrics and everything else. It really draws attention to those. Uh, I want to just give another quick example of a type of chart here. This is a geo chart. Excel has these built in. It's a, one of the options in Excel. Geo charts aren't great at effectively communicating insights. They kind of give you a sense of which regions have the most, have the highest uh, number for whatever metric you're looking at, but it's kind of hard to interpret that data properly. It's not usually the most actionable thing, but I have done a lot of testing across my dashboard projects where I've done one version with a geo chart and one without. And wouldn't you know it, people use the version with the geo chart way more, even though they're not actually using the geo chart itself, just having the geo chart on the page seems to engage people and get them to use the dashboard more. I think that's more of an emotional thing than a logical thing, but it does seem to work. Now this geo chart doesn't just have the purpose of getting people engaged and looking cool. It also shows our region. Because this dashboard has region level filtering, I can go from south to west to east to central, my geo chart is gonna to update to show that region. And when it updates to show that region, it's giving more important context to the person looking at the dashboard. 
It's saying, hey, here's a reminder, by the way, we're just looking at information from these states, none of the other states. And having little visual indicators like that, providing extra context is really important. You have to think about who your audience actually is. What do they actually know and understand when they first look at your dashboard? You sometimes need to kind of hold their hand and guide them a little bit. Give them context, let them know what they're looking at, reinforce what they're looking at. And that's incredibly important when you're choosing what metrics you put on the page. The last thing I want to describe is just how I choose what visualizations to use and how do I make sure that they're actually useful and effective and communicate something. So the first thing I say is think about the most important metric and obviously just put that right on the page. If it is a very important metric, put it somewhere where it's going to draw your eye. That's typically the top left of the page or the center of the page. Make it a little bigger so people know to look there first. And if you're doing a dark theme, you can give it a bright colored background so they know how to focus on that area. They know to focus on that area. And then do what I call anticipating the question. Anticipating the question means, okay, they see that metric. Hey, I know what my sales and profit are for the period. That's great. But how do I know if that's higher or lower than usual? How do I know if that's changed a lot over time? answer that question. So we know that they're going to ask that. So we include sales history here. We show sales performance over time. We include profit history here. We include profit over time. Now they have the context they need to know where they stand across their historical performance. Another question somebody might ask here is, hey, I get that the sales and profit are this amount, but how does that break down by product category? Because my department, my product category is the only one I care about. So how do I see that? So we've anticipated that question. We've included a visualization that compares each of the product categories for profit and sales. And then we've gone one level deeper. And this is what I always emphasize to people. Think about how your data is segmented. Think about who those segments matter to and how much, how deep you need to go, how much information you need to give people. So they see, hey, office supplies has the highest sales and profit. That's great. But how does that fit into the broader context of how that metrics performed over time? Well, we just go right over here and we've got each of these three categories we we're just looking at broken down over time, showing sales and profit. And we have that extra little bit of insight that we needed to better understand how we're performing. This whole process doesn't have to be super hard. It doesn't have to be super complex. Sometimes you just need to give a little cursory moment to look over the, your data set Think about what it means. Think about where it comes from. And more importantly, think about the audience you're going to be showing it to. Who is the person that's going to be looking at this? What insights are they trying, going to be trying to gather from it? And taking the time to consider that before you put information on the page. And then when you do put information on the page, make sure you're going deep enough so that it's meaningful. Make sure that it's labeled so that people actually know what the values are that they're looking at. Make sure that there's context. This is so important. Context really matters. Just putting a big, cool, dark themed dashboard up is great. It looks awesome. It may make you look really cool, but the moment anybody gives it any scrutiny and starts looking at those metrics and asking questions, all of a sudden it all falls apart. And that's what is so important when you're doing data visualization. Balance that with making something that's visually impactful and gets people engaged because that's what gives the best results. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody. I hope this was helpful. Um, one other quick thing. This is a template. I send out templates like this for free on my newsletter. I've got a link below if you want to hop on the newsletter and get the free templates. Um, I'm going to be sending this one out in a little while. So you'll join. It'll send you another template first, but I'll eventually be sending this one out. Um, this is how I help people learn this stuff. You can get a template file like this and start pulling it apart. And that's a great way to start learning how to build it yourself. And in fact, I find it's the most effective way to start learning how to do it yourself. Uh, anyway, thanks so much, everybody. Feel free to like, subscribe, or whatever. Um, I will post more cool templates like this in the future, talk more about building dashboards that balance both visual engagement and actionable insights. Uh, and we've got a lot more to come. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.